hashtag Inktober 2018. It's too cold to be doing this outside. Give me a second. Much better. <laughs> so first off, what is Inktober? Inktober started off with one person who wanted to improve his inking skills or a technique of drawing with ink. So he challenged himself to draw something new every single day for the month of October. And thus, Inktober was born. As October grew and grew, the hard and fast rules that were set in the beginning were brushed aside in the attempt to pursue a broader goal, to promote the creation and sharing of art. You draw with a pen or a pencil or a drawing tablet. You draw once every single day, once every two days, or once every week. There's a prompt online that you can follow or completely disregard. Whatever you do, just draw and share. And if you were to follow me on Instagram at Guy, you would know draw I did. <laughs> 31 days, 31 drawings, all with black ink. So around a week before the end of October, I thought it might have been a good idea to time lapse my drawings. And I instantly regretted not having done it earlier. <laughs> so every day at around 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30, 11, 11 45, I'd go online and look at the prompt for the day. Then I would use a red pen and start doodling and sketching my ideas for what to draw. When I had something that I liked, I would use a black pen and outline the form. Then I would copy that onto a good copy piece of paper using black ink. That way, my lines look crisper and I look more competent as an artist. Oh, and on the last day, I spent a long time trying to work out a full page drawing of a samurai, only to realize that I still wasn't happy with it at the end. So I started completely fresh with an entirely different drawing. So technically, I guess 31 days, 32 drawings with black and red ink. It's not as catchy though. So now that you know how I did it, let me show you what I did for the month of October. Day one, poisonous. I drew Snow White's poisonous apple with the black poison dripping off the bite of the apple. Day two, tranquil. This was the day where it snowed like 40 centimeters overnight and didn't stop for the rest of the day. So of course I drew a girl waiting for the bus in the snow. Uh, day three, roasted. Uh, coffee beans are a very weird shape. <laughs> and uh, I tried to capture that as best I could with the lines and trying to do some shading and texture that way. Overall, this first page I found was really cool because I got to try out three very distinct styles. More of an iconic look, surrealistic look, and then a more realistic look. Day four, spell. Uh, first thing that came up to my mind was a magic wand, and so everything else was just kind of adding atmosphere and depth. Halfway through the drawing, I ended up smearing it, so I just ended up purposely smudging everything else to make it artistic. Day five, chicken, as in the game where two things are hanging towards each other and the first one to swerve off loses. I went with Jets because you can really see the way that they swerve away from each other as well as seeing the trails that they leave behind. Day 6, drooling. So I went with the coolest drooling animal I know, the Komodo dragon. Uh, I went with the, the black drool coming out of the Komodo dragon's mouth as well as shading on the scales to more texture. This was the first page that I tried experimenting with textures with uh, shading to do with the ink. Day 7, exhausted, as in the exhaust fumes coming off of the space shuttle. Again, I got to try texturing plumes of smoke, as well as trying to emulate the bright light coming off from the exhaust. Day 8, star, when everyone's looking up to find stars, I look down to find starfish. So this is a silhouette of a woman diving down to read for a starfish. Day 9, precious, I went with a pearl inside of a clam, glimmering its light. I was able to use lines to texture and shade the clam shell, as well as using it to the protrusion of light coming off from the pearl. This page, I guess, is kind of exploration, uh, up through the sky and down below to the sea. Uh, day 10, flowing. I decided to draw a violinist, and this is two parts. One, the flowing hair, and two, the flow that you're in when you're just so immersed inside the thing that you're doing. Day 11, cruel. I went with the dropping of an atomic bomb on a city. Uh, this is based off a Vsauce video called Cruel Bombs. I tried to depict the strength of the atomic bombs blowing away the city-state. Day 12, whale. Of course, I had to draw a breaching whale. I got to play with the textures of water falling off the whale as well as the water being drawn up from the sea. Overall, this was the last time in a while that I actually went deep with the blacks to try to really show the contrast. I still really like this page and how it turned out. Day 13, guarded the form of a predator crawling. So I went with the mountain lion guarding its meal. I got to play with the texture of the ground itself to add some more environment to the garden. Day 14, clock. This was a suggestion by David. I went with a cracked hourglass with sand pouring out. One, because it let me play with the form of sand as it fell, as well as giving some more depth into the glass instead of just being completely transparent. Day 15, weak. I went with juxtaposing a weak little sapling growing out from a strong falling tree stump. This was the first time that I tried shading all in that same angular pattern. Overall, this page was the first page which I didn't have on the flat, and uh, I really liked how it turned out. 
2016 Angular, I went with a Flying Hawk. Uh, for this one, I really tried to show off the angles of the beak and the claws, as well as the swooping back of the wings and tail. Day 17, Swollen. I didn't know how to make something swollen look aesthetic, so I just chose the thing that makes you swollen, a stinging beak. I'm trying to use the hairs as a, as a way to shade, as well as trying to make the wings really stand out. Day 18, Bottle. I went with a bottle of ketchup. So I was able to use the edges of the bottle to show the refraction of the black to give it some more depth than just uh, the shape of a bottle. All in all, I think this page is probably the best use of space. I was able to blow everything up real big and go really in depth with the details that I want. Day 19, Scorched. I decided to draw the iconic fire flower for Mario. I tried to add as much roundedness to the edges of the flower to give it some more depth instead of just being a flat 2D image. Day 20, Breakable. This is the only time that I had to draw not at my house because I knew that I was not coming back to my grandma's house in time for the end of the day. So I went with a vulnerable human with his heart pulse stopping as a way to show a person's heart being very vulnerable. Day 21, drained basketball player hunching over his knees. This one was really the next time that I really struggled with human form and proportions. Uh, yeah, still not my proudest. Day 22, expensive. What's more expensive than a bar of gold? I went with a brush brushing off gold leaf. I tried as much as I can to draw parallel streaks to try to show the smoothness of the gold bar. Uh, I didn't really have any ideas and I was really pushed to the last thing for all of these, so not really a proudest page, but uh, I'm so glad that I went through with it. Day 23, Muddy. I went with a flooded suburban house. I tried to add some more detail into it to show that it was water rising in the nuts of a really short house. There was a stop sign, tree, uh, rescuers, and boats. I tried to add as much detail into the waves as possible, but uh, at the end of the day, it's still really hard to show. Day 24, chop. I went with an axe chopping into a block of wood. I was really able to play with the grain of the axe handle, as well as of the wood that is being chopped into. Day 25, prickly. I tried to juxtapose the petals by outlining a crisp, dark edge and the stem as much as possible, giving very small prickly hairs to show the, the distinction between those two parts of the rose. This page was me just kind of drawing as big as possible and uh, whatever form I wanted, and so this is the outcome of that. Day 26, stretches is the start of the time lapse. A lot of that came down to just trying to get the right form of the foot being arched enough. I tried to add a lot of texture into the gum to make it seem really sticky. Day 27, thunder. I went with a thunderbird on the top of a totem pole. A lot of it was trying to emulate the style of totem poles. And there's so much detail that went into the wings as well as the rest of it. We even said that this was the most artistic page out of everything that I've done thus far, and uh, I have to agree with them. <laughs> day 28, gift. Yeah, I went with a Valentine's Day type of gift. Uh, I went with the teddy bear, the presents, and chocolate and flowers, the whole of uh, Day 29 was double. I decided to go with a pair of figure skaters. I checked it out. That, that movie is actually called The Triple Twist. It's not double, but th th there's two of them. So, day 30, Jolt. I went with a kite flying in a thunderstorm with a key. Uh, this is me trying to really start using the Sharpie more, uh, try to get some more contrast out of the drawings. Uh, I think this turned out really good with the big lightning strike in the background, and with all the branching lightning coming off the kite. Day 31 was Slice. I tried so many different forms to try to get the realistic feel of a swing. And adding more of the armor and stuff onto it as a samurai, I still wasn't quite satisfied. So I started just completely separate ones. Also, uh, one with someone cutting through a tatami mat, doing various slices. I like this one more because I, I feel like that I captured the essence of the form of a swordsman much more so than with the samurai before. And uh, trying to make more of a piece that I was satisfied with. Whew, that was a lot of drawing for one month. Um, and I'm sure there's a question that all of you are thinking right now, which is, why did I do this? Did I not have three midterms back to back to back to be studying for or something? Um, and the question really breaks down to, to two parts. Uh, one, I still really like drawing. Um, <laughs> and the thing is, when we get older and older, I feel like the frequency of which we do the things that make us happy gets less and less. If I were to ask you as a kid if you like to draw, how many of you would have said yes? And out of those who said yes, how many of you have picked up a pen or a pencil, a piece of paper, sat down for the express purpose of drawing something in the past, say, six months? When I said that I drew more in this past month than I had in the past five years, I was not exaggerating. And having an opportunity to draw again and again and again um, was something that I just didn't want to pass up. Something that forced me to draw over and over again and do something that I still really enjoy. And I mean, as we get older and older, we have more reasons to not be doing those things. But I think we also have to be aware of the fact that how many of those are just excuses. Yes, I could have been spending that 45 minutes every single day studying or sleeping, 
But the truth is I probably would have been on YouTube or Instagram or Reddit or something. <laughs> and if it's not that, another reason I feel like that we don't do the things that make us happy is because of those around us. I feel like that as we become older, we become hesitant to do the things that make us happy because we're afraid of being judged by others. And part of that is just being afraid of not being good enough. Um, which brings me to point two, which is, I don't think I'm that good at drawing. Now hear me out. I know full well I'm not bad at drawing, but I don't think I'm great. And I'm confident saying that because I have seen many of you draw some amazing pieces. I've seen you guys make some incredible pieces of art. And yet I was the only one who did in October. So many amazing pieces of art that haven't been created, that aren't created because you weren't there to make it. It's kind of sad that we have a culture where we will judge others for doing something poorly instead of celebrating the fact that they're just doing something that they love. It's a shame that so many things won't be done because we're just afraid that we're not good enough. And so this, this was me saying, I don't care if I'm not great at drawing. It's something that I really enjoy doing. It's something that makes me happy doing. And I would love to share it with you guys. And I mean, it's, it's amazing when I see you guys do, doing cool stuff. Uh, I still smile every time I see that small glimpse of you guys sharing the fact that you guys are doing something that you love. And I wish that I could see it more. Um, and that's why I do this. To try and share that with you guys, try to get you guys to do something that makes you happy as well. And it's a shame because it's something simple, it's something small, doing something that makes you happy. It doesn't take a long time to sing a song, to get up and dance, to write a poem, to write a story. And yet, we don't do it often enough. So, go out there, do something that makes you happy. Not for me, not for anyone else. Don't care about what anyone else thinks. Do it for you. Now, I don't know how many of you are going to take this to heart. I don't know how many of you are going to do it. I don't know what you're going to do. All I know is that I love you. But until then, I'm Steven. This has been one heck of a month. And I can't wait for next week. But hopefully, I won't be doing this alone.